Welcome back to another amazing video from Kotak Cherry. Today we have with us Mr. Shravan Goyal from UTI AMC. He has over 15 years of industry experience in risk management, equity research and fund management. So Shravan currently heads the passive uh, passive division for UTI AMC. Hi Shravan, glad to have you on board. Hi Sneha, thank you for having me here. Thank you. Yeah. So Shavan, uh, we have seen the tremendous growth in the passive space in the last five years. And uh, we have also seen smart beta uh, funds come into the limelight. What's your take on that? So Snail, globally, there is a clear shift towards passive investing. And we are saving, say, uh, seeing similar trends emerging in India as well. Uh, if you look at growth of passive funds uh, in India, then we will find that there is a tremendous growth that has happened in the last five to seven years. Uh, just to give you a few data points, uh, size of passive funds in terms of mutual fund industry EM was about 1% in March 2015. That has grown to 12% of mutual fund industry EM now. And in terms of absolute size, size of passive funds have grown from little over 14,000 crore to about 4.5 lakh crore in similar period. And this particular high growth has been facilitated by Retirement funds investing about 15% of their annual appreciation in, in passive funds. At the same time, uh, active funds are finding it difficult to beat the benchmark on a consistent basis, mainly because markets have become much more efficient uh, of late, and the information asymmetry uh, is also helping to some extent. So, because of these reasons, people are finding it finding it more convenient to invest in passive funds. And as you are aware that. Passive funds are uh, giving simplicity of investment, discipline, investment approach. At the same time, passive funds are available at low cost. So because of these advantages, people are getting, uh, in the sense, people are started looking at passive funds in a big way. So apart from plain vanilla market cap based indices, wherein companies are selected based on size of the company, we are seeing a lot of growth in smart beta strategies as well. So. Smart beta strategies are vector based strategies wherein the portfolio is constructed by uh, extracting uh, some performance factors to uh, performance factors to uh, achieve desired results. So some of the examples of smart beta funds could be momentum, quality, low wall. So there are two types of uh, smart beta strategies. First, the smart beta strategies could be built based on financial parameters of the company. So for example, quality, value, growth, these could be some of the parameters which actively fund managers are also looking at while taking decisions. So for example, quality as a factor wherein companies are selected based on broad qualitative parameters. Some of the qualitative parameters could be high return on equity, better balance sheet, which could be gauged uh, based on debt to equity ratio or consistency of earnings growth. So these, these could be some of the quality parameters. Similarly, there could be value strategy wherein companies are selected based on relative price to earnings, relative price to book value. So apart from these financial uh, parameters, the uh, smart beta indices could be constructed based on certain market factors. So for example, momentum as a strategy wherein companies are selected based on the recent price performance. So companies which are showing stronger momentum are selected based on the thesis that uh, momentum continues in the medium to long term and because of high persistency, if you are buying high momentum companies, in that case, at a portfolio level, your outcome could be quite stronger. So people who are slight risk covers, who are ready to take additional risk to generate better risk adjusted return can look to invest in momentum based strategy. Similarly, uh, uh, a particular investor is risk covers in that case he can invest in low volatility strategy wherein uh, companies are selected based on lower volatile and generally low volatile companies are providing downside protection during tough market environment so there could be various ways to construct smart beta strategies based on investors requirement so uh, over the long terms we have seen that mid caps are a better bet to beat inflation but in during uh, volatile times like these, is it a good bet to invest into the mid-cap space? So generally we have seen that mid-cap plays an important role from overall portfolio construction point of view. Because generally 
in the longer run, mid caps provide better growth opportunity as compared to large cap companies. But at the same time, volatility of mid cap companies is far higher as compared to large cap companies. And some of the investors may not be comfortable with heightened volatility of mid cap companies. So rather than uh, approaching mid cap from short term perspective, one should approach mid caps from longer term perspective. Similarly, the volatility could, could be brought down by adding few of the factors such as quality. Quality as a factor is very important from mid cap space because generally mid cap companies are much more volatile. The volatility could be because of the business model of these companies because uh, some of the companies may have higher dependence on single products whose demand could be very volatile. At the same time, uh, during high inflation period, uh, because of raw material cost pressure, the margins or performance could be impacted. Generally, we have seen that mid cap companies are less research as compared to large cap companies. And because of this reason, generally mid caps companies could overreact to quarterly results. So volatility in quarterly earnings could also impact volatility of mid cap companies. So we believe that adding quality layer could help construct a very balanced portfolio within mid cap space. So wherein uh, companies which are having better return on equity, which is a good quality parameters, which is very important from long term wealth creation. At the same time, quality of balance sheet, which could be gauged from lower debt to equity ratio. Generally, we have seen that companies which are having higher financial leverage, they have higher financial risk as well, because if cycle goes in there uh, against them, in that case, they may face financial risk. At the same time, consistency of earnings growth is very important. And generally, we have seen that high quality companies are able to take price hike during the tough times. And so they have seen more consistency in, in terms of their earnings growth. So because of these features, adding quality filter could help reduce volatility in mid cap space. At the same time, quality mid cap companies have generated better risk adjusted return in the longer run. That was really helpful. So uh, when an investor is looking at the uh, mid cap space, what should be the ideal time horizon for investment and what should be some parameters to look while investing into this space? Sure. Generally, one should approach mid cap from slightly longer term perspective because in the shorter term volatility is very high in mid cap companies. But if you have seen entire cycle in that case, mid caps could deliver better risk return in the longer run. We have analyzed data and we have found that if you have invested in mid cap from three year rolling return basis, then chances of getting out performance is about 60% of the time. But had you invested mid cap from say 10 year perspective, then 97% of the times mid caps have performed better as compared to large cap companies. So one should approach mid cap with longer term time horizon. That was really wonderful. I hope uh, this info regarding the smart beta funds was uh, well appreciated by my fellow cherry investors. So uh, everyone, please like, share and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel for more such amazing content. Happy investing. Mm -hmm.